You're bleeding. Not the kind that fix with a band-aid and a kiss from mom. The kind that makes puddles. The kind that turns your vision into a tunnel and your legs into suggestions. There's a hole in you that wasn't there 10 minutes ago, and the nearest hospital is either rubble, occupied by people who'd rather shoot you again, or 300 miles through hostile territory. No ambulance is coming. No surgeon in scrubs. No morphine drip. Just you, a bathroom cabinet, and the very real possibility that you're about to become fertilizer. But here's the thing about bullet holes. They're surprisingly democratic. Doesn't matter if you're a prepper, a scavenger, or just lucky. The human body leaks the same way. And if you know what you're doing, and if you can keep your hands steady and your panic at a simmer, you might just plug that leak long enough to see tomorrow. No worries. We're doing field medicine, apocalypse style. Step one, stop the bleeding before you become a statistic. First priority, pressure. Not the existential kind, though you've got plenty of that. Physical pressure. Find the cleanest cloth-like object with an arm's reach. A t-shirt, a towel, a curtain, hell, a sock if that's all you've got. Fold it into a thick pad and press it directly onto the wound like you're trying to smother a small fire. Because that's basically what you're doing. Smothering a hemorrhage before it turns you into a deflated meat balloon. Hold it there. Hard. Don't peek. Don't lift it to check if it's still bleeding. Of course it's still bleeding. You have a hole. If the cloth soaks through, don't remove it. Add another layer on top. Removing it tears off the clot you're desperately trying to form, and you're back to square one, except now you're dizzier and the room's spinning like a broken carousel. If it's an arm or leg, elevate it above your heart. Gravity's free and surprisingly effective. If it's your torso, well, you can't exactly levitate your liver, so skip this part and keep pressing. Step two, the tourniquet, when pressure isn't enough. If the bleeding's arterial, pulsing, bright red, spraying like a busted radiator hose, you need a tourniquet, fast. Find something two inches wide, a belt, a torn strip of denim, a dog leash, not a shoelace, not a wire, those slice through tissue like a cheese cutter, and you'll lose the limb for sure. Wrap it around the limb, a few inches above the wound, between the hole and the heart. Tie it tight. Then find a stick, a pen, a screwdriver, anything rigid, and twist it like you're winding a clock. Tighter. Tighter. Until the bleeding stops. It's gonna hurt. A lot. That's how you know it's working. Mark the time somewhere visible. Sharpie on the skin, blood on the wall, whatever. A tourniquet left on too long kills the limb. You've got maybe two hours before the tissue starts dying. After that, you're choosing between bleeding out and amputation. Fun times. Step three, clean the wound or invite infection to the party. Assuming you're not dead yet, congrats. Now comes the part where you prevent sepsis from finishing what the bullet started. You need to irrigate the wound. Translation, flush out the dirt, fabric, and whatever else hitched a ride into your body. Boil water if you can. Let it cool until it won't cook your insides. No stove, use bottled water. No bottled water, tap water is better than nothing, even if it tastes like rust and regret. Pour it directly into the wound. Not a dribble, a stream. You're trying to wash out debris, not baptize it. If you've got saline solution, use that. If you've got hydrogen peroxide, use it once to bubble out the gunk, but don't overdo it. It damages tissue. If you've got vodka or whiskey, save it for later. Alcohol stings like hell, doesn't sterilize as well as you think, and you'll probably need it more for the psychological damage. Pat the area dry with a clean cloth, or the cleanest cloth. Let's be honest, nothing's truly clean anymore. Step four, pack the wound, because holes don't magically close themselves. If the bullet went clean through, entry and exit, you've got two problems. If it didn't, you've got one hole and a piece of metal playing hide-and-seek with your vital organs. Either way, you need to pack it. Now, find sterile gauze. If you can't, find clean gauze. If you can't find that, find the cleanest piece of fabric you can get your hands on. Rip it into strips if you have to. You're going to start at the deepest part of the wound. Gently, but firmly, push the gauze in with your fingers or a pair of tweezers. Don't just cram it all in at once. You layer it. Think of it like you're stuffing a tiny, horrifying turkey. The goal here is simple. Fill the entire cavity to apply internal pressure. You're trying to stop the bleeding you can't even see. 
Now, there's a sweet spot. Don't pack it so tight you cut off all circulation, but don't pack it so loose that it's useless. You're aiming for firm but forgiving, like a mediocre handshake. If there's an exit wound, you do the exact same thing to that one too. Once both are packed, cover them with a larger dressing and tape it down. Medical tape is best. Duct tape works in a pinch. Scotch tape? That's a joke. But if it's all you have, you better layer that thing like your life depends on it. Because it does. Let's move on. Step 5. Antibiotics. This is the difference between survival and sepsis. Infection is the silent killer that comes after the main event. A bullet might miss your heart, but bacteria doesn't care about your luck. If you have antibiotics, amoxicillin, doxycycline, anything broad spectrum, start taking them. Follow the dosage. Don't you dare skip a day because you feel fine. Feeling fine is a lie your body tells you right before it decides to shut down. No antibiotics? Okay, don't panic. Look for honey. I mean real honey, not that corn syrup garbage in a bear-shaped bottle. It has natural antimicrobial properties. Smear it on the wound before you dress it. It sounds like something from the Dark Ages, but it's backed by science, and more importantly, by desperation. Garlic is another option. Crush it up, mix it with a little oil, and apply it to the gauze. Yeah, you'll smell like an Italian restaurant, but you might just stave off a fatal infection. It's all about trade-offs. Step 6. Monitor for shock. Your body is a drama queen, and shock is how it overreacts. It kills more people than the actual injury. You need to watch for the signs. Pale skin, a racing pulse, shallow breathing, confusion, cold sweats. And here's a fun fact. If you're checking these symptoms on yourself and you realize you're confused, that's a very bad sign. If you feel it coming on, lie down. Elevate your legs if you can. Get warm. Use blankets, jackets, whatever you've got. Sip water, but don't chug it. Your stomach isn't interested in processing a gallon of anything right now. So, why does any of this actually work? Your body is already trying to save you. Blood clots are just your platelets sticking together like microscopic sandbags. The pressure you apply helps them stack faster and build a dam. A tourniquet just stops the blood from reaching the construction site. It buys you time. It doesn't solve the problem. Packing the wound creates that crucial internal pressure and gives your tissue a scaffold to start rebuilding on. The antibiotics, or the honey, are your special forces sent in to kill the invaders before they can colonize. Your immune system does the rest. If you survive the first hour, your odds double. Survive the first day and you might actually make it. And that brings us to the punchline. There's no hospital, no doctor. It's just you, some makeshift supplies, and the stubborn refusal to die on a dirty floor. But look at you. The wound is packed, the bleeding has stopped, you are still breathing. In this world, that is a win. If the pain starts to fade and the fever never comes, then congratulations. You did it. You survived. If the wound turns red, swells up, and starts to smell like death, well, you tried. And out here, trying is worth something. Now get up. You've got a bullet to dig out later or a grave to avoid. Either way, you're not done yet.